With both Portland and Charlotte regionals completed, we're finally getting an idea for what the Regulation E metagame looks like. Now that we have data clearly showing the power of Ferrigraph Bloodmood teams and Ogrepan Hearthflame, we can start speculating about what anti-meta Pokemon will counter them. Today, let's explore this by discussing 5 strong anti-meta Pokemon that you can try out right now. If you enjoyed this video at any point in time, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more competitive Pokemon content. But first, this channel is partnered with Gamersups. If you want to support my work and get great tasting drinks, you can order Gamersups through my link in the description down below or with code MOXIEBOOSTED at checkout for 10% off. Gamersups is a caffeinated product that I recommend only to my 18 plus viewers, but my link will send you to their caffeine free product section just in case. Every product purchased through my link supports my channel financially, so I'd really appreciate the support. Now back to the video. I didn't know what kind of video I wanted to make today, so we're back to the anti-meta mon discussion. So, yeah, um, with Portland regionals and Charlotte regionals under our belt and Liverpool just around the corner, uh, I think it's time we talk about some of the various anti-meta mons that you can be running right now uh, that do pretty well into the metagame. Uh, but aren't particularly popular. That's basically what an anti-meta mon is. It's not like, I beat everything. It's, I do very well into one particular matchup, and I am fairly decent everywhere else. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. You know, if you guys enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications. Uh, comment down below right now uh, an anti-meta mon that you want me to maybe check out in a video sometime. So yeah, let's get right into it. Uh, we're going to be using Charlotte Regionals for our data set here to uh, sort of explain why we're going with these Pokemon. But yeah, so first one up, I've tweeted about it a few times. I said it's just a matter of time before some handsome Mexican guy pulls up to a regional with the Tinglu to ruin the giraffe and bear players days. So yeah, uh, Tinglu is very, very strong. It's actually historically a very good Pokemon. Um, especially in Regulation C, it was one of the most used Ruins. Uh, obviously, Vessel of Ruin is an ability that allows for everything except for Tinglu to have their special um, have their special attack cut down to three quarters. So that basically means that Tinglu is an Assault Vest for the whole field, and it itself can run the Assault Vest. So Tinglu is very cool because it's able to pair extremely well into a few archetypes running around right now. Namely, the big one is going to be Ferrigraph plus Ursuluna Blood Moon. So I have the damage calc open here, and I can sort of explain why Tinglu is actually pretty decent in this matchup. So as you can see, I have the anti-bear set here. Uh, if we go ahead and just pull up a standard, it's not really Ferrigraph you're worried about. I mean, if we take a look at like, you know, bulky imprisoned Ferrigraph, Dazzling Gleam is going to be doing 10% to you. Oh no, it's a possible 10 hit KO um, or 9 hit KO or whatever. Uh, you know, I'm not really concerned about that. Uh, what you're concerned about is going to be the Ursuluna Blood Moon, which is one of the strongest special attackers in the game right now, with the capability to one-shot almost everything with Terra Normal Life or Blood Moon. Except, this guy. It only has a 33% chance to two-hit KO with Terra Normal Life or Blood Moon. That's really bad. That's really bad. The two-hit KO? No. And keep in mind, it can't use it twice in a row. So you can actually switch in on this thing, then live the Hyper Voice. And yeah, um, Tinglu is also 45 base speed, meaning it is slower than the Ursuna Blood Moon, allowing for this guy to be able to go for a Snarl into it, lowering that special attack even further while dealing, you know, a little bit of chip damage. That special attack goes down to minus one. Oh no, now that Blood Moon's only doing 35% to you, making it a 25% chance to three hit KO. Let's see you get a second Snarl off. Oh no, now it looks like they, they don't even four hit KO you. Very interesting, but beyond that, being able to basically apply an Assault Vest to a partner Pokemon is very good. If you take, for an example, um, Rillaboom, who is an actual Assault Vest Pokemon, you know, let's say you have an AV Rillaboom on the team and you decide not to go for the AV on the Tinglu, the Tinglu just existing helps out quite a bit, because as you can see, Terra Normal Blood Moon is a chance to one-hit KO an Assault Vest Rillaboom with 252-124 Spit F, which is a lot of investment, keep that in mind. Um, meanwhile, your Wood Hammer isn't doing as much as you would really like to the Ursaluna. You might need to go for two of those. Um, or maybe the Terra Normal, or maybe the Blood Moon isn't even going for Terra Normal here and you do have that chance to one shot. But regardless, if you have that Vessel of Ruin on the field, now the Rillaboom will always live the Blood Moon and get recovery from the Grassy Terrain at the end of the turn. So they actually make a really good combo. Um, another combination of Pokemon I thought would be very cool with uh, Ting Lu would be if you would decide to go for something like a... Uh, Ting Lu and uh, Ogre Pond Wellspring combo. The main reason being Ogre Pond Wellspring is already known for its ability to take on special attackers like Fluttermane or Ursuna Blood Moon because of its plus one spit F. 
Um, but also just, you know, Ting Lu adding onto that with the Vessel of Ruin uh, helps it out quite a bit. But Ogre Pond is also able to help it out since Ting Lu is a ground Pokemon. It's weak to, um, you know, grass moves as well as uh, water type moves where the Ogre Pond Wellspring is actually going to be able to go for Follow Me and protect it from water type moves while healing itself. Uh, and the Ting Lu, you know, won't have to worry about that. Uh, Ogre Pond Wellspring will also be able to eat a close combat from an Urshifu pretty well. But honestly, every Ogre Pond variant uh, works pretty well with Ting Lu. I think Ogre Pond Hearth Flame is one that I'm extremely interested in, uh, just because it's able to put out a lot of like offensive pressure, and it basically gets the 50% boost in its uh, special defense by Ting Lu existing. So that's that's like pretty cool. You kind of get the best of both worlds in that case. But yeah, and also of course Ivy Cudgel with um, plus one off of the uh, Embody Aspect is actually a really scary thing to deal with. So these two can actually make a pretty threatening combo. As for what you would fill the rest of the team out with. I would say that like having a, a priority blocker like your own Phorygraph would be a pretty good idea. It also lets you go for a more offensive Tinglu if that's the case. Um, but also you have access to, um, I don't know, the main limiter here is the fact that like you don't want to actually um, run a lot of special attackers next to the Tinglu. But we've seen that Ogre Pond plus um, Rillaboom is actually a really good combo. So like Ogre Pond Rillaboom uh, with like the Swords Dance set and Grassy Glide is very strong. Of course, spiky shield or follow me, depending on your preference there. And then you just filled out with like strong physical attackers. Your own Urshifu Rapid Strike would also be very good here. And then I guess you could go with like a, a Tornadus. Like, and that would actually be a pretty scary team, in my opinion. You don't have a lot of special attackers, but Tornadus is likely not going to be on the field at the same time as Tinglu. And honestly, this is a very physical, heavy metagame beyond the bear. Because if you look at it, you know, physical, 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 physical physical and you kind of just have dedicated special attackers look this team only has one that's another thing i was looking into um ting lu on a this this is a little bit more niche but uh ting lu with the gouging fire partner is actually pretty interesting because you can actually go ahead and run like the clear amulet and that allows you to uh not really have to worry about incinera and stuff and gouging fire is already picked up in usage due to booster energy howl you're welcome for that, by the way. I talked about that day one of this DLC dropping. I think I might have been the guy who invented it. Um, you know, there's a, there's a non-zero chance. There's a non-zero chance I had an impact in the metagame for once. Uh, but yeah, like these guys, as well as like a Chin Pao. And, you know, uh, Ogre Pond Wellspring probably in this case. This is actually a pretty threatening combination of Pokemon. You don't really care. Like, uh, Gouging Fire takes like no damage from special attacks now. Like, it already had pretty phenomenal bulk since these guys would usually run like almost max HP. Um, but now it, you know, on top of all that bulk is going to have access to Ting Lu next to it, hitting things for like plus one stopping tantrum damage, uh, while the gouging fire is able to spam like heat crashes and stuff. So that is a really interesting one. I, I think, um, you know, we should keep that in mind going forward that that is an option for Ting Lu. Next thing I want to talk about that I think is very solid in the metagame is Iron Hands. And you might think Iron Hands, that's not, that's not an anti-meta Pokemon. Brian Hands has been number one in our hearts since day one but guess what he's not currently number one in the metagame if we take a look at the total number of iron hands that made it to day two there's i think only one and it got second place of course on nick's team let me double check i think that oh no no there are a couple of there are a couple more iron hands in day two but they're all the way down here in like the 60s yeah there are three more iron hands in day two uh if we take a look at like the items they're using um there's iron hands Wait, where's the Iron Hands? Did I click on the wrong thing? Hello? Iron Hands, Iron Hands, Iron Hands. Huh. Strange. Okay, so that's not an Iron Hands. What about you? Okay, so that's not an Iron Hands. That's a bug. Alright, and you? You're an Iron Hands, right? Okay, yeah, that one is an Iron Hands. <laughs> Weird. Okay, yeah. Uh, there's like an Assault Vest one. I think that the clear amulet set going the furthest is a pretty big indicator of what you want from an Iron Hands at the moment, though. Uh, we can see that uh, Nick here, uh, Nicholas Donnelly, uh, ended up running the clear amulet Iron Hands with Terra Grass, Fake Out, Wild Charge, Close Combat, and Heavy Slam uh, on like this balance team uh, alongside the Earth in a Blood Moon mode. So the reason Iron Hands is very strong into the metagame right now with the clear amulet is one, uh, the spamming of Incineroar. Uh, you know, obviously you're going to be able to block parting shots and stuff, but Mainly, Iron Hands' biggest issue is that a Drain Punch at minus one does not do much damage, and that is an issue. However, a close combat at neutral 
does more than you would ever imagine it to because of its 140 base attack. Let's go ahead and run a calc right here. Um, I have this Iron Hands. I have this Iron Hands here. Clear Amulet. Uh, versus an Earth and a Blood Moon. The close combat is a roll to KO with Brave Nature 156. However, if you go 252, it is a uh, roll in your favor to KO. So if you really wanted to, you could actually run max attack. I don't think that's like the best option, but being able to threaten that one shot uh, with like the 156 set is pretty good. And also not all Ursula and Blood Moon are running 252 HP. Actually, a good amount of them are running less HP, like 100, uh, because they do actually want a little bit of speed investment. And the good news about that is it makes it easier to one shot them with the close combat. Plus, plus you don't have to worry about Intimidate to lower that damage. Uh, they're taking recoil from life orbs. So you can actually just get them in range where they end up KOing themselves. Uh, and beyond all of that, you do underspeed every single Earth in a Blood Moon if you decide to go for zero speed. That being said, I don't think zero speed is like the best way to run it, but it is certainly an option. I'm not sure if Nick has released the details about his Iron Hands, um, but yeah, uh, you know, we might find out that it was zero speed just to make sure you always underspeed and deal with the Earth in a Blood Moon, which was like one of the major threats going into this tournament. As you can see, like it, it placed extremely well. Uh, but the cool thing about Iron Hands is not only does it do well into Earth and a Blood Moon, but it also does really well into Urshifu Single Strike and Rapid Strike. So Urshifu Single Strike is a big one right now. It's a little bit more popular than Rapid Strike from what I can tell. Uh, or they're about equal, really. But Single Strike Urshifu does deal a lot of damage with Wicked Blow and Close Combat. Iron Hands' natural bulk means that even with like not even close to full investment in HP or defense, you see I only have 92 and 4 here. Um, this close combat is doing less than 50%. Meanwhile, your close combat will one shot them back. Also into Urshifu Rapid Strike, you know, their surging strikes are doing a decent amount into you. The close combat's doing a decent amount and your wild charge will one shot them back. That's actually really useful. Like the fact that Iron Hands can threaten these one shots um, into a lot of the powerful Pokemon in the metagame is a testament to its viability. Fluttermane is another very important Pokemon that we need to keep in mind. Uh, Specs Moonblast, obviously now that we're not running the Assault Vest, is a one-shot versus us, but if they're not running Choice Specs, if they're running like any other item, not the Bug Memory obviously, you will live that with some like really high speed F investment, and you one-shot them back with Heavy Slam every single time. Uh, you know, especially since they can't intimidate you now, uh, there isn't really a... <laughs> there isn't really a um, Fluttermane that can survive that. So that is really, really nice for this guy. Uh, other things in the metagame that it deals extremely well with, King Gambit, like it walls King Gambit all the way home and back, you know. Uh, with Terra Grass, you don't really mind the Amoongus matchup at all. You just go ahead and just hit everything next to it and then, you know, deal with it. Um, and yeah, I would say its biggest issue in the metagame is probably just the existence of Entei being able to burn it with Sacred Fire, since it's the only Pokemon that really has the opportunity to burn at the moment. You do see some Will-O-Wisp Arcanine. Actually, was this one Will-O-Wisp? Um, no, it was AV, but you do see some Will-O-Wisp Arcanine and that can be a little bit of an issue, but if they're not Will-O-Wisp, you just one-shot them with the close combat since they can't intimidate you. And the Flare Blitz barely does anything. I mean, let's take a look at this damage, right? Hisui and Arcanine, the Arcanine with higher attack, Assault Vest set, right? Flare Blitz is doing less than half to you and then you just one-shot with close combat. That close combat is one of the strongest moves in the game. 140 base power. Keep in mind, Urshifu's close combat is coming off of what, 130? Yeah, it's 130 attack, and Iron Hands is just stronger, just outright. Actually, I'm really curious. So 156, one, it hits 198. Meanwhile, Urshifu um, with Adamant hits what, if you like Max Invest? It's 200. So it's about the same as an Adamant Urshifu with, like, not full investment. If they're running Jolly, which that is a, you know, they're usually Adamant, but if you see a Jolly one, you're hitting harder than that one by a lot. So yeah, that's actually really cool. You're hitting about as hard as Max Attack Adamant Urshifu with a Mon that actually beats it 1v1 straight up. So that's very nice. Next up is Dragapult. So Dragapult is a Mon I've had my eyes on a little bit. I actually lost to it at um, Charlotte. Uh, and yeah, no, shout out to Salty Dolphin. But yeah, so Dragapult is very cool because it was sort of an anti-meta pick going into the first Regulation C tournament once the Ruins became available. But now this Ghost Typing actually helps it out a lot more that... Uh, that priority spam is everywhere. Usually, if you want to make sure your team isn't getting like, you know, not sucker punched, but like extreme speeded all the way into the grave, uh, you'll have to run something like a Ferrigarath. But uh, Dragapult itself is able to be naturally immune to these moves while pairing positively into things like Dragapult uh, and even Entei. Even Entei, you deal quite a bit of damage with a choice band. 
So if we take a look at this, uh, Banded Dragapult, which is my personal favorite set with Terra Ghost and Sword of Ruin versus an AV Entei is going to be dealing a significant amount of damage uh, with the... Oh, that's the wrong Terra. Dragon, 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 or no, Ghost. You can see that Terra Ghost Terra Blast with Sword of Ruin and a Choice Band is actually going to be a roll to one shot Entei. And the Entei isn't going to be able to go for extreme speed into you. The Entei won't be able to go for a sacred fire into you. It's actually just like a straight up nuke button. Beyond that, you naturally outspeed Fluttermane and Chen Pao. So they will have to go for a sucker punch if they want that damage. But, you know, if you decide to go for a defensive Terra, then you're able to just go ahead and get out of there with like a, you know, Terra Steel plus U-turn or whatever. But yeah, um, Fluttermane has to speed boost to get past you. You need like Tailwind support. This sort of Mon can actually just go ahead and lead off versus things and just start taking KOs. And the U-turn deals a lot of damage with Sword of Ruin. Let's say that your opponent leads off with like an, an Incineroar, which would normally, you know, be able to survive a hit and then threaten you with a knockoff. If we go with like bulky, reliable, you know, Citrus Incineroar, uh, and you hit them with the Choice Band U-turn with Sword of Ruin, you're dealing 40 to 47%, chunking them just outside of their Citrus Berry range, and meaning that the Pokemon that comes in next will be able to go ahead and pick up that KO. So that's actually really, really sick for this guy. Uh, and also, yeah, you're immune to Fake Out, you're immune to Extreme Speed, uh, you basically just annihilate Dragonite. Like, if we look at the Dragonite matchup, they're forced to click Outrage to even come close to getting a KO, and you're just able to go ahead and click, like, Dragon Darts. <laughs> That's actually really cool. Yeah. Uh, Dragapult, probably the Pokemon on this uh, list that I think, like, has the, I wouldn't say the highest potential. I think it's really Iron Hands is going to pick up with the Clear Amulet. But it is like one of my top picks at the moment. Next, we have Weezing. So Weezing is really, 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 really cool right now. Um, and it's not necessarily like Regigigas Weezing or Slacking Weezing or anything crazy like that. It's just Weezing itself. If the rest of your team is prepared in such a way where you're like, okay, I don't need my abilities. You can start to ruin people's days. You can absolutely just ruin lines and lines and lines of Pokemon. So... If we take a look at something like Chente that is running around the metagame right now. Um, actually, I just realized there's like no Chente in top eight. Uh, show me a Chente. There it is. If we look at Chente, <laughs> the one run by uh, Zhijiang, uh, we can see here. It is a combination of Pokemon that would normally be immune to like intimidate and stuff. But by running the Weezing with neutralizing gas you're able to turn off abilities. That means no sort of ruin, no inner focus. What do you run next to that? Incineroar, of course, but you say Moxie boosted, Moxie boosted, Mr. Boosted, Dr. Professor boosted. How do I intimidate if my ability's off? Friends, that's where the ability shield comes in handy. It keeps your ability turned on despite the neutralizing gas, meaning that the Incineroar can now fake out the inner focus Pokemon and intimidate them. That is really huge. You're intimidating an Entei. You're intimidating a Dragonite. Intimidating a Dragonite ruins it entirely. Like, one Intimidate is enough. I like to calc my Incineroars to be able to tank, like, whatever Dragonite hit, and then go for Parting Shot, because it just allows for the next Pokemon to, like, get hit by a Wet Noodle. So being able to go for that Intimidate and then the Parting Shot into these leads that should hypothetically beat it means that um, Incineroar plus, like, Weezing will be able to annihilate a lot of things. Beyond that, um, you're also turning off like Sheer Force on the Landorus. So the Life Orb Earth Power, while it does threaten a lot of damage, doesn't always threaten an Oko. Actually, let's take a look at that. So Weezing um, into like a Landorus Eye. You can see that Earth Power does a lot, right? Obviously, I'm running Terra Bug because I don't really want to deal with that. But if we have the Incineroar in the field, like a very bulky set, you know, careful plus special defense, you can see that with neutralizing gas on, you always live the earth power, even though it's life orb sheer force, because it's turning off the sheer force. That's really big. Pair this with Pokemon that don't want their abilities. We're talking, you know, the likes of a Fluttermane, or you can make the argument that like Ogre Pond Wellspring doesn't always need in its ability. Um, obviously, you're going to want to have the, you know, ability to turn on when you have, you're going to want the embody aspect to turn on once you do Terra. But like these Pokemon don't really like need them to function. So that is very cool. So like having that core Pokemon along with some kind of reliable speed control, obviously you can't run like booster energy or anything. So I've read, I would highly recommend you run like choice specs in the Flutter main. Uh, you can start to really see where this comes together. Uh, as for like speed control, 
I don't know, you could go with Tornadus. I don't necessarily think it's like super necessary, um, especially since you're turning off, you know, Tornadus is Prankster. Honestly, a Weezing plus Specs Flutter lead, and you just go for like Terra Fairy Specs Moonblast. Like that can just allow you to straight up one shot the Tornadus and like they don't even have their speed control. Now Flutter is the fastest thing in the field forever. Like that's that's actually like a line that you have into this sort of thing. But yeah. And also, if you want, you can run Regigigas. Like you can just throw it on there and just be like funny. Yeah. <laughs> it's a cool it's a cool Pokemon. It's a really cool Pokemon. Uh, I think Weezing's is actually like in a really nice place. Um, and yeah, the final Pokemon that I would consider sort of an anti Metamon. Uh, is going to be Gudra, and I was kind of stuck between Gudra and Registeel, and even though I think Registeel is one of, is like on paper the better option between the two, with what's going on in the metagame right now with the uptick of Urshifu single strike, I would say actually Gudra is going to be the better option between them, and that's purely because Shell Armor blocks crits. This Pokemon does not care about Urshifu. It, like the, the, the single strike uh, Wicked Blow will bounce off of this guy like it's nothing. And with that, you're just able to go ahead and go for like Protect, Acid Armor, Body Press, Heavy Slam. The issue with how people are using Gudra, in my opinion, is that people lean way too far into the I'm going to set up and win sort of thing. Like they'll put like Gudra, uh, Comfey, they'll put Cresselia, they'll put like Grimmsnarl and stuff and like, a, and, and like a, a Galarian Moltres, right? And I, I'll look at this and I'll go... Okay, so so like I just KO everything around the Gudra and then I KO the Gudra with special attacks. Like it's it's not a big deal. I think that that isn't like the best way to run Gudra. I think you run Gudra the way the Registeel players run Registeel. So if we take a look at it, there was a Registeel somewhere here, somewhere here in Cut, right? Um, or not Cut, but like Day Two. I know there was a Registeel. I know there was a Registeel. I probably already passed it. Hold on, I'm gonna find it. I'm gonna find it, and I'm keeping this in the video. Here it is. So you can see that this Registeel team, it has an Ogre Pond, a Fluttermane, an Incineroar, a Registeel, a Cresselia, and a Gomora. What it does not have is five support bonds plus a Registeel. The reason that they run it this way, and not the way that Gudra players for some reason insist on running Gudra specifically, is because Registeel is a win condition. It is not the win condition, it is a win condition. They have Glamora with, you know, uh, Toxic Debris to set the spikes to make it harder for them to stall them out. And you basically play the Gudra or the Registeel like a, almost like a Dondoza would. You lead off with these strong special attackers. We're talking Fluttermane. Uh, you can even go like Ogre Pond, Hearth Flame if you want to like really punch some holes in the team. And then like a Glamora um, and then like a Tornadus. And I don't know, we'll just throw in whatever here. Uh, Urshifu Single Strike, right? You throw all of these things at them. You throw everything at them. You get rid of whatever special attackers you can. And then once everything's poisoned, chipped into range of whatever, and like the specs Fluttermane has been removed from the field, Gudra hits the field. It has shell armor. It has leftovers. It goes for, you know, acid armor. It walls everything, protect, body press, heavy slam. And now they can't break it. They physically cannot break it. It is a steel type. It cannot get poisoned. Um, it cannot get crit. It cannot be whatever. Um, the only like thing that beats it at this point is Sacred Sword from Chen Pao. But guess what? Terra Fairy is right there. If you're able to use this thing as a win condition, that is the best way to play it. But for some reason, every time I see a Gudra, it's Gudra plus like 90 support Pokemon. And it makes no sense to me. But yeah, this is my final one. I think that it pairs very decently into the metagame with how much Urshifu is running around, how physical the meta is right now. I think you'll be able to get away with this mon. So yeah, that is my list of five anti-meta Pokemon that I think you guys should be using. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comment section down below. If you enjoy, leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.